Call the meeting to order. Mayor said yes. 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 Uh, we have certification of election results. I don't know if there's any questions or about that or Bruce. Uh, Your Honor, we you have uh, received the uh, um, statement of uh, votes cast uh, from the uh, county clerk, and she has certified those votes, and you have them in front of you. I move that we certify the election results. Second. Yes. 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 <coughs> Next, we have the approval of the July 23rd, 2012 work session minutes. And um, there's no questions. I move we approve those minutes. Second. Williams? Yes. Yes. Uh, Abstain as I was absent. Yes. Uh, yes. And next, under approval of minutes, we have the July 23rd, 2012 regular meeting. Any questions? If not, I move we approve those minutes. Second. Second. Yes. No. Yes. No. Abstain due to absence. Yes. No. Yes. Under new business this evening, we have uh, one resolution, Bill Number 2012-50, a resolution authorizing the city manager to sign an agreement with the Missouri, with the Heart of Missouri Tourism Center. This is up for reading and passage. Bruce? Yes, Your Honor. This is a uh, renewal agreement, and to cover the details of the agreement, I will turn to Roger Haynes. Good evening. At the last uh, Mexico Tourism Commission meeting, uh, the commission reviewed the renewal of the uh, uh, Mexico Tourism Center where we have a uh, basically a display area, a lit display area where we can put brochures that would uh, uh, give visitors the opportunity to see what we have to offer in Mexico as far as uh, coming in and stopping and staying and spending a few dollars here in Mexico. The cost of that uh, area for advertisement is $100 per month, so $1,200 per year. And the commission uh, recommends to the council uh, that they concur uh, with the Tourism Commission's recommendation to pr and proceed with reading and passage of the attached resolution, again, <coughs> agreement with the Tourism Center uh, there at Kingdom City for $1,200 for display purposes. That is the annual cost. I'd be glad to answer any questions you may have. Is this the same that we've had in previous years? Yes, it is. The, the $100 <clears throat> light box or whatever it's called, medium light? Yes, that is correct. I would go. Um, good. I see on uh, number two, it says the first month's rent should be no charge, but yeah. we're still paying 1200 No, that, that actually is when we first entered into the agreement because we had cost in actually building that light box and putting the advertising uh, logo together. So they waived the first month in this contract. Uh, I actually saw that too today, Chris. We need to remove that in future years. Uh, it, it is the $100 per month, the $1,200. If a person read this, you could make the, uh, you know, the assumption that it was $1,100 instead. There's a lot of people that visit the tourist center over there. So it's some good advertising. I think the fact that it's right next there to the firefighter memorial gives it additional stops, that's for sure. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Roger. Thank you. Thank you, Motion Read Bill number 2012-50. Second. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. yes. No. Yes. Yes. Bill number 2012-51, an ordinance of the City of Mexico, Missouri, to establish a procedure. Whoa, wrong one. Oops, I'm better now. 2012-50, a resolution authorizes the City Manager to execute an agreement with the Heart of Missouri Tourism Center for requested funding from the Mexico Tourism Tax. 
whereas the Mexico Tourism Commission reviewed an application from the Heart of Missouri Tourism Center, and whereas the Mexico Tourism Commission recommends to City Council that the Heart of Missouri Tourism Center be allowed to receive tourism funding for their tourism advertising campaign. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Mexico, Missouri, as follows. Section 1, that the city manager be authorized to enter into an agreement on behalf of the City of Mexico with the Heart of Missouri Tourism Center for tourism funding. Section 2, this resolution shall be in full force and effect from and after the time of this passage. I move for passage of Bill number 2012-50. Second. <coughs> William? Yes. Um, Mr. Miller, yes. Bob? Yes. Bob? Yes. Bob? yes. Bob? Yes. Next, we have a new business ordinance, and this is uh, for first reading by title only. It's bill number 2012-51, an ordinance of the City of Mexico, Missouri, to establish a procedure to disclose potential conflicts of interest and substantial interest for certain municipal officials. Bruce? Yes, Your Honor. This is an annual ethics requirement in accordance with uh, provisions of Senate Bill 262 that each political subdivision with an annual operating budget in excess of one million must file financial interest statements or devise code of ethics. This ordinance therefore establishes a procedure for disclosure by certain public officials and employees of private financial and other interest matters affecting the city. Those individuals affected are certainly the elected officials, the city manager, and the chief purchasing officer. And uh, we would recommend council proceed with the first reading by title only. Thank you, motion read ordinance number 2012-51. Second. Yes. 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 Bill number 2012-51, an ordinance of the City of Mexico, Missouri, to establish a procedure to disclose potential conflicts of interest and substantial interests for certain municipal officials. Okay, next on the agenda is our other business this evening. We have appointments to the Mexico <coughs> appointment to the Mexico Memorial Airport Advisory Board. Bruce? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Father John Smith has uh, resigned his position on the board, which is set to expire anyway in October of 12. You have received uh, um, four uh, individuals interested in expressing interest in serving on the board. Now, I, I would point out, Council, I think it probably makes um, good sense that uh, you have one month left on this term and then it starts a three-year term. So any appointment we make tonight would probably make sense to make it for the one month plus the three years. There would be really no reason to come back next month and just reappoint again. So we just as well do it for the unexpired plus the renewal of the three-year term. Can we do that? Yes. I, we want to do it in two separate. We have been advertising. Um, everyone that's been applied since listed. We only have one position. So there'll be another one too. Okay. I uh, can't remember uh, when we were working on this or uh, this uh, setting up this board at one point and I don't remember if it actually ended up in there and I lost my copy but wasn't there a certain number of these individuals that were supposed to be within the city limits part just one Yes, that's correct. Actually, I'm not sure he lives in the county at all. I think they moved to Columbia. Yeah, I don't think he lives in the county anymore. Which one's this down? Sebastian. But it could only be one person outside of state limits? I thought it was more than that. Am I might get confused. Have we, have we really looked at that? <laughs> I, th I thought I had it here, and I don't. Russell, do you have it? 
Could you find it? <coughs> I thought I had it here and I didn't. I, I remember having a lot of discussion about yeah. how many should be within and how many should be without. And it seems like it, Two was, or three. it was like five to four or something like that. But I'm totally blank at this point as to how many. You, you think it's one then? I, I don't, but I don't think it's anything like four. Um, there are only a certain number that are allowed to be. Yeah. It's it's not that we have to have so many in and so many out. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, yeah. I knew there was something about yeah. it, but I yeah. just didn't remember how it worked. You can have up to so many out. Of, out. I move we appoint Mark Stewart. Second. Well, we're going to wait to find out about the residency, or. Well, he's within the city limits. So we know that it wouldn't be it's safe. It wouldn't be safe. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was, if I was going to vote for somebody, recommend somebody out of the county, I'd like to know before we voted if that was. Right. He's within the city limits. So I'm sorry. You're. Ask your question again. Okay. I'd like to know the qualification that it has to be in the city or in the county. If it has to be in the city, that's great. If it has to be in the county, I'd recommend somebody else. Well, there isn't anything has to be in the county. We, we would, if, if I remember correctly, we don't, I don't think we required anyone from out of the county on it, but Russell. Let's see, see what this says officially before we... At least four voting members must be residents of the City of Mexico. Maximum of three voting members may be non-residents. So, uh, so you currently have one outside? Sebastian, and I, does Steve Hagan live in the city limits? I'm not sure if, I think, I think he does not. And I think he is past the city limits. I don't believe it's gotten to him yet. So the rest of these are all in town? Does anybody know? Caleb does live in, in town. David Taylor does not. Uh, Roger Dubert. I'm not sure. But, oh, he's he's out. I see. He's on Audrain Road 806. And John Clayton says Audrain Road 815, so he's out of the city limits. How about Patrick Finder? Patrick uh, Finder. Patrick, as far as I know, lives in the city limits. I'm not positive. I know CW lives in, and Jim Lipinski lives in. We have council comments. Councilman Bob. Well, I uh, was pleased with the vote and want to thank Chad <coughs> and everyone else who did lots of work to get the word out and uh, get the vote out. That's all. I'd like to congratulate Chad as well. Uh, got the, got the uh, park tax passed. I would say, for one thing, um, the paper is still putting out there that food is not covered. It's going to be not taxed, and it is. So, I don't know. People need to know that it's going to be taxed. Well, 
I'd also thank everybody for voting for the tax. Now that uh, Chad now has 12,000 people watching him, he's got uh, everybody in South Mexico watching him. <laughs> but he, uh, he will spend the money wisely. So we're appreciative, Chad, for all the hard work that you put in on it. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor, I've been contacted by some folks that live along Fair or uh, Lakeview from Clark to Fairground. They're complaining about the trucks going down through Lakeview. You know, we just micro-sealed that. Um, there's a couple of things I think we need to consider here. First of all, it's against the law for them to be there, and the residents out there pretty well know that. Uh, it's been designated for no trucks for many years. Um, I think that if we have an improvement in this, it's going to take a couple of things. First of all, I think it's going to have to be some new and improved signage. Uh, we have a green sign eastbound on Lakeview there, west of the intersection of uh, Fairground and Lakeview that nobody pays any attention to. I think we need to go to the black and white regulatory signs and prohibit the trucks from going on down through there and tell them they must make a right-hand turn at the next intersection. And I also think that we probably need one on Lakeview or on uh, South Clark above and below the intersection with Lakeview so the trucks don't turn there. And then I think, uh, Chief, that we need some strict enforcement of that for a while. And, and to add to that, I've also, last year, I believe, wrote a letter to every business at the industrial park reminding them that that was a, not a truck route and to inform all of their drivers, et cetera, et cetera. So we have taken some extreme measures, but what happens is their GPS, everyone we stop, their GPS takes them on that route. And they, as soon as they turn, they know they're wrong, but they keep going. Well, in that case, I think a summons would be in order. Yeah. And I think it needs to be brought to the supervisor's attention that this is a priority traffic assignment, and it needs to be handled. Um, as far as the businesses out there, we've tried that before with the bean trucks, or the, down, down the soybean mill, and writing letters to them don't do a whole lot of good. Um, I think we just need to enforce it. Um, and some of the uh, residents complained about school buses, that they're going up and down Lakeview also, because since we've moved the bus garage out the end of Lakeview, that's just the shortest route up through there. Well, they're not picking up students and they're not transporting students. They have no business on that road either. So I, I think there's some room for some improvement here. I know this, the, the uh, residents out there would greatly appreciate it and I think in the long run it would probably save us some money on some of the repairs we have to make on Lakeview. Thanks Drew, it's not that good anyway. So. No, it's not. Can I, add, can I add to that a little bit? Um, I think one thing, a, a good sign right there at, um, at Teal Lake where they're supposed to turn because all the time I have truckers out there that get confused because there's no real marking that that is I think there's a little sign or something, but they constantly blow by that and then they come back and they're like, where do I turn? And So, I mean, you can mark where not to go, but I think you also should probably do some kind of marking where to go. Yeah. might help. Yeah, I think it will. But we need to do not, not use these green and white signs. Let's go back to the black and white regulatory signs and, and people pay more attention to those than they do a, a green and white sign. Know that they're even mentioned in the driver's code. Certainly been an issue for a long time. Yeah, I, I think we can do something about it. Though. I think we have some, some some way to do something about it here. Thank you, Bruce. All right, we have uh, a special work session Wednesday night on budget. Starts at four in the afternoon, and uh, we'll try to get you out by eight p.m. Um, and depends on how long Roger's going to talk. I only need uh, two and a half hours. Okay, maybe I, I three. Yeah. You, if you can live within three, okay, we'll be out in six hours. <laughs> what was that sign? Are you providing? <laughs> that sign? Are you, you know, providing at church, pillows? At church, we tell the minister you can talk as long as you want to, but we quit listening at eleven forty-five. <laughs> now your shirt, your shirt's going to be this Wednesday. Yeah, and we, we've already had one council member show up a week early for it, so um, he, he he should get uh, you know kudos for 
being the first one on time. Yes. <laughs> uh, the first time you've been on time. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is the uh, uh, pool did close for the season uh, Sunday. It closed this past season. Yeah. Yesterday. Yeah. Uh -oh. uh, we're going to be open three more days, so folks will <coughs> lose the training, and then we'll be emptying it um, into the park after the chlorine evaporates out. So to help water the park. Bring the water trees. Water my yard. <laughs> <laughs> so instead of running down the sewer, we're going to water trees with it in the park. <laughs> Good move. So that's all I have. Okay. Um, Chad, thank you for the great job you did to get the information out. And, and the committee, I don't know who was all, all on that committee. I hope we've done something in terms of a thank you note or something for all their efforts in regard to that. Uh, last session, we had a gentleman here who had a complaint about Lakeview. Have we, have we been able to get a hold of him? I have tracked down who he is, and I've left a message with his daughter, Vaughn, to try to get a cell phone number for him because apparently he doesn't have a landline here yet. Okay. I'm, I'm on his trail. Okay. So I will get to him. I think a, a meeting at the lake would be really helpful to explain to him what's going on there. Yeah, I'll, I'll get a phone yeah. number. And thank you, Russell, for your presentation at the Highway Commission meeting in Hannibal last week. A, a better 54 will certainly enhance our economic well-being into the future if we can make that happen. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you for those efforts. Uh, any public comments? I don't see anyone from the public. Uh, so I move we adjourn. Second. Yes. 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 Yes.